Hello everyone, here is Huang Ku Kang. Welcome to my second English video. Well, in the last video, I was discussing the uh, research paper Buffett's Alpha, uh, where we found out that Buffett invests in low PBR, low beta, and high quality stocks. Well, but we didn't really define what these high quality stocks mean, you know. And actually, AQR has published another research paper describing exactly what that means, high quality. Well, let's jump into the research paper. It is called quality minus junk. Uh, junk actually means low quality stocks, you know. <clears throat> well, the summary of quality minus junk is, first of all, they define what a high quality stock actually means. The second one is, um, the paper discusses whether you can earn excess returns by investing in high quality stock. I'm a weird guy, so I really uh, enjoy reading these 60 pages uh, research papers. Okay, I admit it, I'm weird, you know, but it was great fun for me, you know. Of, uh, unfortunately, it is very hard to use because it is very hard to find the actual stocks which uh, meet the criteria of a high quality stock. And actually, this research paper is quite difficult, I would say. So I give five points for difficulty. Well, on page one, uh, they define what a high quality stock is. Ah, by the way, I will give you the link on the YouTube page where you can download this paper. Okay, so AQR defines a high quality stock as a safe, profitable, growing and high payout stock. And uh, they also said that uh, uh, going long high quality stocks and going short low quality stocks is a very good strategy works not only in the US but also in 24 developing countries. So you should really take care what I'm saying now, you know. So what does high quality actually mean? So they defined it as a um, safe, profitable, growing and high payout company, you know. And uh, there are a lot of profitability ratios. You probably might have heard of ROE and ROA in, when you study some finance in school. Actually, um, the um, uh, most fashionable ratio these days is the GPA ratio. GP stands for gross profit, which is... Uh, um, sales minus um, costs of goods sold and A st stands for assets, you know. And uh, some professor who is called Novi Marx found out that this GPA describes future returns better than ROE and ROA. Okay. Okay. But CFA stands for cash flow, actually operating cash flow divided by assets. And then there's this ratio GP um, divided by sales. And then there's the accrual ratio. I think there was a Professor Sloan uh, who wrote a research paper in 1995 who found out that uh, companies with um, uh, higher cash flows than net income uh, have uh, much higher uh, re uh, stock returns later in the future, you know. So accrual is a measurement um, yeah, uh, of um, the quality of earnings, I would say. Well, and uh, they defined the um, uh, growth ratios as the following. Well, you might have seen these ratios just one page ago, you know, and they defined it as the five year growth of the following ratios GPA, ROA, ROA, CFA, GP sales, and accrual. Well, growth ratios of uh, these six factors, you know. So you might substitute when using the following. For example, the three-year growth of net income, three-year growth of operating income, and the three-year growth of sales. Well, and now we come to the safety ratios. Um, for example, there's beta. I think the lower, the, uh, the um, more safer, I, I would say. Well, and stock volatility, then there's earnings volatility. And obviously, uh, if uh, these ratios are lower, the stock might be safer, you know. There's the Olsen score and the Z score, uh, which was invented like 40 years ago by some professors. Uh, yeah, I um, I don't describe them uh, into, I don't, I wouldn't go into more details, you know. And 
Now we are coming to the payout ratios. We analyze the stock issuance and the debt issuance. Obviously, uh, the more issue is high quality, you know. And payout stands for dividend divided by net income. So if you give more dividends out of net income, uh, that means that your company is stronger and has a higher quality. Uh, and well, and AQR has invented the quality ranking. You know, you have all these profitability ratios, RE, RA, GPA and stuff, you know, and you um, yeah, build an average ranking of all the profitability ratios, you know. For example, one company might be the number 1000 in ROE, the number 500 in ROA and um, number 700 in GPA, for example, and you just add them and uh, average them, you know. And you do the same with all the growth ratios, all the safety ratios, and all the payout ratios. Okay, and then you will have four average rankings. And uh, finally, uh, you just build the... And if you have the average of these four average rankings, you have the quality ranking defined by AQR. Now you probably will say, ah, how should I do that? I'm desperate. Well, well, don't be desperate, you know. So first of all, it's very important to know how to distinguish between quality and junk companies, you know. So um, you know uh, which ratios you have to look to distinguish between quality and junk companies. So it is very important. Probably before watching this video, you didn't know it, right? You, you just admitted it, right? And I don't think it is necessary to use all these 20 ratios. I think using one to two ratios per category, I think uh, one to two for profitability, one to two for growth, one to two for safety, one to two for payout is probably now using just four to eight ratios. I'm pretty sure. Well, and then of course there is some wisdom in this research paper. The first wisdom is high quality stocks remain high quality stocks. Well, let's see what I mean by this. For example, you can see here profit T and P1 says low and P10 says high. Well, obviously, uh, the profit pro profitability of low profitability stocks was quite low at the beginning. And the profitability of high profitability stocks were obviously pretty high. Okay, I mean, this is no miracle. However, even 10 years later, uh, where you can read profit T plus 120 months, low, quality, low profitability companies remain lowly profitable and highly co profitable companies remain highly profitable 10 years later. Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, the difference is less pronounced by growth, safety and payout, but you can still see that uh, growth, safety and payout uh, remains uh, even after one, three or five years, which is pretty amazing. So which means that high co profitability companies remain so, High quali quality remains high quality. This was pretty interesting to me. And maybe investors uh, underestimate this quality and uh, they think high quality companies come down and low quality companies go up to high quality, but this doesn't really happen. Well, wisdom number two. Quality stocks have much higher returns than low quality stocks. Uh, so um, high quality stocks have much higher returns than with junk companies. Well, you can see the excess returns, um, which says Q and J, which means uh, high quality stocks in average had a 0.4% higher return than low quality stocks per month, you know. And 0.4% per month is about 5% a year, right? And I think um, in the global markets, it's around the same, you know. In the global market between 1986 and 2012, uh, the um, uh, return difference between high quality and low quality stocks were around 0.38%, also around 4.5 to 5% a year, I think. Wisdom number three. You know, um, the difference between high quality companies and low quality companies 
is much more pronounced in smaller stocks. Well, for example, in the United States, P1 small means uh, it, mm, it is the first decile of market capitalization. So these are the smallest companies in the US. And there, the difference between the uh, high, which is around 10% annually, which is pretty astonishing, you know. And uh, in the global market, the difference is even more pronounced. Look at the P1 and P2 companies, the uh, companies with the um, smallest market capitalizations. And there, the difference is around 0.9% per month or 1.15% per month, which is around, I don't know, between 11 and 13, 14% a year, which is pretty huge, you know. So um, it is really uh, yeah, profitable to invest in smaller companies with high quality. With that, I would like to conclude this video. Thank you very much for listening to me. Goodbye. See you next time.